Mmm, this neighborhood smells delicious. What do you mean delicious? <laughs> well, I mean it smells like Tomatoes, potatoes, lima beans, green beans, carrots, cabbage, rice, barley, chicken, split peas, corn, rutabagas, and... And cheese? Yes, cheese. And celery. Do you want to know why everything smells so good? There's a soup factory down the street. That's why. On Monday, they're cooking chicken noodle and tomato. On Tuesday, chili. Wednesday, split pea. Thursday's a good one. Cream of mushroom. Mmm. And in the afternoon, minestrone. My favorite's Friday. The smells coming out of there on Friday are great. That's because they're making vegetable. I really love soup. With so many soups, you can eat a different one every day. And some people do. Soup is a meal enjoyed all around the world. Some countries have their own special kinds. It's easy to make, and it's good for you. I have one big problem with soup. You've got to use a can opener. In olden times, you didn't need a can opener. Thick soups were homemade from root vegetables and smoked or fresh meats. But today, if you're in a hurry, learn to use a can opener. This factory makes a million cans of soup a day. A million a day? How do they cut up enough vegetables? By starting early in the morning. The cabbages are first. That knife looks sharp. Mushrooms, big fat ones, are sorted by hand. Many soups have potatoes in them. Someone's been peeling a lot of spuds. The brown spots are cut out. And then the potatoes are diced or chopped into little cubes. Most of the vegetables are fresh, but these carrots are frozen. Over here, they're cutting up celery. It'll be going in the soup, too. Celery's my favorite! vegetables are inspected. What are they looking for? If there's a mark on any of the cubes, the inspector will find it. What's this, a blender? No, a vacuum tube. The vegetables are being pushed up to the next floor on currents of air and water. It's the easiest way to move them from one floor to another, and the water keeps them clean. Come on, let's go upstairs and take a look. A shaker table separates all the little cubes and washes them again. Carrots can sure dance. Look at them go! Here's how the mushrooms ended up. This is the part of the factory where they make the soup. So when do they start making soup? Oh, they've started already. There go the potatoes. They just dump the whole barrel in? Yes, this is a very big kettle. Every can of soup should taste the same. 
so the soup maker must follow a strict recipe. Today, he's making vegetable soup. The recipe calls for carrots, vegetable oils, barley and cabbage. And guess what's in here? Tomato juice? Close, it's tomato paste. Burnt sugar. And a little can of spices to give the soup more flavor. Very few people know what's in the can. Even the soup maker isn't sure. It's a secret recipe. Finally, some starch. Now that's what I call soup. Five or ten of these kettles are all cooking at the same time. This is the life. Ah. It smells good, doesn't it? When the soup is cooked, it's brought to the cannery. And here's the machine that fills the cans. Looks like a big soup bowl to me. That's what it is. As the cans go round the outside, they're filled to the top. Once the cans are sealed, they're sterilized. This big sterilizer kills any germs by heating and cooling the soup. Did they ever put the wrong labels on any of those cans? Not very often. A computer knows what's inside every can and where it's going. So the mulligatani doesn't get mixed up with the minestrone. Exactly. There are so many different soups. I'll bet there are hundreds. I wonder if they all have names. No, many are just family recipes handed down from parents to their children. Even today, new soups are being invented all the time. They are? Sure. Can you make up a recipe for a new kind of soup? What would you put in it? And what would you call it? 